Hey, boys and girls, I really hope you enjoyed our story, the other brother today for our um, Bible story that we did. And I'd like to do a fun craft to go along with that too, as I typically do with my Sunday school kids. So uh, the craft we're going to do today has to do with the nasty, gross, scuzzy pig pen that um, Ben had to live in. And I want to make one of those for your craft today. So this is what it looks like when it's all done. Yours, of course, can look different, um, but this should just give you an idea as to where we're going with this. To make this craft, you're only going to need a few items that most of you should have around your house. If you don't have them, that's okay. You can always use markers or pencils or color pencils or crayons to make up for what you don't have. Um, for this craft, though, I found some popsicle sticks um, that you're going to need. You are going to need um, some googly eyes, but again, if you don't have those, that's okay. You can always use a Sharpie marker. You're going to need some brown paint. Again, if you don't have brown paint, you can use crayons or markers. Um, you're going to need a Sharpie marker. You're going to need a cupcake tin. I have bright pink, but if you have um, just regular white paper, you can use that too and then color that pink. Um, you're going to need some glue, scissors, blue construction paper, and then a couple strips of pink paper and green paper. You're also going to need to print off the Bible verse unless you want to hand write it yourself because that's what we're going to make into our cloud on our picture. I also did my my original drawing, I did it on a dark blue sheet of paper. I also have light blue construction paper, so I brought that up to make for uh, the sample I'm going to make with you today. It doesn't matter what color blue you go with, it's entirely up to you. So let's go ahead and get started on our 3D pig picture. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to have to take your popsicle sticks and you kind of need to measure where they're going to go on your paper. You're going to need seven sticks. You need three for the support posts. And then you need four, sorry about the dog here, you need four for the cross posts. And you can just kind of eyeball it like that. And again, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly measured. We're not winning any art awards here. This is just fun to help you remember what our Bible story was all about. And Ben had to live in the pig pen when he was stuck in the pit and mired in the depths of his sin. So that's kind of an idea is where you're going with this. Now we're going to glue our popsicle sticks on. So you can take this first one and just run a bead of glue right down the stick like that. And glue it on your paper. You're going to want to give a little bit of a spacing between the bottom of the paper and where your post is going at because we're going to put some ground and some mud and some grass on there. So you don't want it touching the bottom of your paper. And then the same one with this one. If you're like me and you've got a terrible head for numbers and memory, you can re-eyeball it with your cross sticks again and then put it down like that. And then for your third one, again, just like that. And like so. And then we're going to put our cross sticks on. Oops, you didn't have to actually do it all the way down. That's my bad. Just want to kind of put them on the edges there like that. And if you just want to put a little glue dot here and a glue dot corresponding on the other post, you can lay those down just like that. And then again, come up a little bit higher and put the glue here. Be the easiest fence you've ever built. And then some more here too. There, and there's your big pens fence. Now we're going to make the grass. To make the grass, I want you to take your green sheet of paper and we're going to fringe cut like we've done before. For kids that are learning how to use scissors, this is a great opportunity. There's uh, no real wrong way to do it. You can make your blades of grass thin or thick. And then what I did, and again, you don't have to, but what I did is I cut them out in sections. So I have one. You want to fold up your grass a little bit like that. So it kind of pops up and that's going to be like our middle section. And then I come back to my strip of green paper and I cut some more. And I want to cut this one a little bit longer than I did that middle one because we're going to accordion fold it to make it kind of bushy like a big chunk of grass. So now this one's a little bit longer than that one was. And we're going to fold up the, the blades of grass again. And then I want you to very carefully accordion fold the papers together like this. So they kind of bunch together. You're going to have your blades of grass kind of getting tangled up a little bit and that's exactly the look you're going for. You're going to see as it kind of 
curves around a little bit as you're quartering, folding it like so. And now you get kind of a, a bush of grass. And that's what that one's going to be. And then you're going to come over here and do it again one more time because Mrs. Post is all about symmetry and we like things to be equal on both sides. I'm a little OCD by nature and so I like things nice and even. And so we're going to make another kind of bushy bush on the other side. And again, we're going to fold up like this. And in case you missed it, I'll show you again, make an accordion fold as you go, just overlapping the edges on top of each other and then kind of spreading out. If you tear your paper, that's okay. We have glue. Glue is our friend. Glue is messy, but glue is our friend. Make sure you open the glue bottle. It works better when the bottle's open. And then you can glue your grass down into your corner just like that. If you need a little bit more to help it, stay put. You can be generous. Just remember though, the more glue you use, the longer it takes to dry. For this piece that's going to go over the center, you want to put that over here along the strip. And then make sure that you push it down up over the fence post. Kind of like how weeds grow up around your fence and you can't quite get them out. You want to put it there. And then take your other bush and put the glue on that one too. Just like that and put it down here like so. And again, you can glue your accordion folds down so that it stays nice together. If you're using Elmer's glue or school glue, it'll dry transparently so all that whiteness will disappear as we go. Okay, so now we're gonna make our pig. To make our pig, we have to do a couple things first. You have to take your pink sheet of paper here and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out a little square because we're going to cut out the pig's snout. And that's just going to be a plain old circle. If you'd like to trace a nickel or a penny on a piece of paper, you can use that if you want it nice and round and even. Or you can just free, free eyeball like I did. Sometimes you get a little of an edge there. That's fine. And then take your Sharpie marker and you want to draw two big circles for his nose. Just like that. And then you're going to want to take your eyeballs and your cupcake liner and you want to straighten out your liner like that so that it's a little bit flat and you want to glue your nose and your eyes onto your cotton or your cu cupcake liner. So there's his nose and his eyes. If you don't have googly eyes you can take a piece of white paper and you can draw eyes on those and cut those out. Make them as big and as goofy as you can because that's what makes your pig kind of fun looking. So that's the body, the head of your pig and body of the pig. And now we're going to cut out his ears. You're going to want to take your scrap of pink paper again and cut off about an inch and a half rectangle because we're going to make your ears. And I want you to fold that paper in half and then fold it in half again. For little kids with safety scissors, this might be harder to cut through depending on what kind of paper you have, but they should be able to do it. If a parent wants to draw out the shape of the ears, they can do that so the kids can cut. Or if they just want to freehand cut it, you can do that too. You just want to make kind of an oval cut and then come up to the top of the point to make their ears. And then you're going to have two ears here like this and if they're too big for you just fold them back over again and make them a little thinner and if you mess up too much just cut out more papers there's no right or wrong way to do this every pig is different there so now you have your pig's ears and then to make his legs his front legs I did a similar thing where I cut off a rectangle about an inch and a half long and this time I folded it the long way in half, like this. Out of the top of it, I made a triangular cut for his hooves, like that. And then along the sides, I made angular cuts, making them look like his legs, like that. And then if you open it up, you can just cut out what remains, cut it in half so that you have two legs. 
I know pigs have four legs, but in our picture we're only going to do two of them. And only show the front two legs. And then you're going to want to get your Sharpie marker again. And I suggest that you color this over paper so you don't Sharpie marker your table. But if you do, go get your toothpaste and a towel. This toothpaste will take Sharpie marker out of a wood surface. You'll also take it off your refrigerator and some painted walls, depending on how creative your little Picasso has been. And you want to color the hoofs black like so. And we'll do this one too. And now you've got two hooves. And now we can actually put our pig on the fence. So the first thing you want to do is figure out where you want his legs to be. And you know he can be kind of hanging over the edge of the fence like that. So just glue his legs on where you think he would be best fitted. And then this one we can glue on right here. Like this. And then you want to flip your cupcake liner over and you want to draw a line of glue along the edges. If you have a glue stick, this might work a little bit better for you. This kind of glue does make this paper pretty soggy. So a glue stick might actually be better for this part of the project if you have one. I don't have one. I'm pretty sure the dog ate it. And then put your cupcake tin, or cupcake liner I mean, upside down on your paper like that and just press the edges to secure it. Then take your ears and put just a little blob of glue on the back of them and put them right up against the edge of the cupcake liner like so. And now your pig is done. We are almost done with their project. The only thing we have to do now, my grass is popping up. The only thing we have to do now is cut out our cloud so take your, if you've already printed it out, take your print out. If you haven't printed it out, then just cut off a piece of paper that's big enough for you to copy your Bible verse down. I chose Psalm 40, verse 1 and 2, which says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the myrrh. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to sand. Um, but if you have a different Bible verse that talks about being redeemed from the pit or from the mud, by all means, you can use that verse too. Um, and then you just want to do kind of like curvy shapes to simulate a cloud floating in the sky. And we're going to come around and come up to the top. And again, we're going to make some curves here. It's a nice big fluffy cloud. There, and that's your cloud. And then again, if you have a glue stick, that might work better than um, regular glue, just because this can wrinkle your paper. And then put your cloud in the sky like that. The last thing we're going to do on our project now is put the mud! Because, of course, the pigs like to live in a muddy mess. So I have brown paint. You can also use brown marker or brown crayon, um, whichever you like. If you're using brown paint, just apply it directly on here, because pigs are messy and muddy. And you just want to put a couple drops on and a couple drops over here oops that's a lot so we're going to take some of that off thank you cameraman and we're going to take some of that off and put that right back in the jar because we don't need quite that much mud and what you're going to do is take your paintbrush and you just kind of want to dab paint splotch it and you want to get it over here by all your grass even get some on your pig if you want because pigs are messy and muddy and just make it look like these pigs have had a good old time running around in their barnyard making an ultimate mess there and then let everything dry let your glue and your paint dry and you have your project that goes along with our story today of the other brother remember that if you find yourself lying in the mire and the pit and the mud that you can always go to Jesus for forgiveness and he will wash you clean as snow. So thank you very much kids. We hope that you have a great afternoon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye now.